B2B Cambodia, the portal for business news in Cambodia. The American Chamber of Commerce in Cambodia organized a workshop on the future of bank assurance in Cambodia, which touched on the subject of generative AI for value creation in wealth management and insurance. We had a chance to interview Bohan Jayaraman, partner at Bain and & Company, and Nikki Landolfi, Regional Director of Group Partnership Distribution at AIA Group, to delve deeper into how AI can help to reinvent the insurance business from front to back. And I believe the impact is going to be profound. Um, this is uh, a technology that fundamentally changes operating models. Uh, we haven't seen such big inflections uh, in the past uh, other than when for example, we saw the introduction of the internet. Like I mentioned in my talk, uh, what happened with the internet was uh, the ability to sort of bring down the cost of electronic distribution almost to zero. What we are now seeing is the ability to bring knowledge tasks, uh, incremental cost of knowledge tasks to almost zero, uh, which is a fundamentally different way of thinking about how you will uh, do uh, new things, uh, knowledge tasks within an organization. So I can't not but, uh, you know, uh, but have a big impact uh, in organizations across uh, different, uh, you know, areas of work. So uh, uh, through the, the, the life cycle and through various processes, we're certainly going to see tremendous impact coming from the technology. Right? And uh, I think that will play out in the next few years. Some of the, some of the ways to do that is perhaps uh, starting very small as an organization, you know, small and confined proof of concept and and test and learn and 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 and, and socialize with with regulators these these ideas and and uh, surely will be will be a journey but uh, you know if we never start we we never make make progress um i i think the 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 way to think about this is firstly to be open to learning um what are the new skills that are needed uh, product management is evolving into something that's way beyond what it was in the past Technology is becoming a lot more democratized. So it is not necessary that you need to be a very deep coder to be able to do what you need to do. So I would almost say that uh, the thing uh, that uh, you will need to think about as you're looking at your career ahead is uh, some of these new opportunities that are coming up in areas like product management, in areas like prompt engineering, in areas like managing customer experiences uh, and uh, trying to see what is the best way you can harness the technology uh, you know, for uh, value. So uh, think about each of these as opportunities and think about what you will need as skill sets uh, uh, to, uh, you know, sort of build into uh, these opportunities. It's an opportunity when we think about um, customer engagement, when we think about um, uh, being relevant uh, to how we engage with customers. And, and some of the things that I've shared to representation refers to um, uh, becoming hyper personalized. Um, and then doing that sort of hyper personalization at scale, which really means going beyond just broadcasting messages, going beyond engaging with the customer at the point of sale, because we want to sell you something because we, we think we have to do it now. Uh, but, uh, but rather engaging with customer at the top of the funnel where you actually have, um, where, where the customer is not even thinking about purchasing a product really increases uh, share of time, share of mind, and eventually share of wallet. I don't want to paint too much of a rosy uh, picture. There are there are uh, challenges, there are risks associated to um, going too far in, in, in the AI spectrum. We always have to be very careful about putting things into context. Um, my, my sharing was more around bringing uh, perspective from the group. You know, it's always wise to think about the specific context of the market, the, 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 the maturity of where each market is, uh, and then, you know, tailor strategies and approaches that are most relevant. I think the big advantage of the technology clearly is that it democratizes access, right? So in the past, you needed to have a large team, you needed to have a big organization to be able to do things effectively, whereas now what you can do is uh, start uh, with uh, 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 an API that you can buy at a subsent cost from one of the hyperscalers and start your work immediately, which actually has the reverse impact. You don't need to have scale. Uh, large, smaller organizations can uh, use the technology way more easily uh, than they were able to use uh, in the past. Uh, scale is no longer perhaps as much of an advantage as it used to be. Maybe that's the way to think about it. And uh, while it democratizes a field, it also opens up new opportunities for financial services. 
I think I think what we what we see across other markets is perhaps um, uh, you know a close a close collaboration with uh, with with insurance companies on these areas and then and banks in 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 general working together. Uh, shaping up the agenda, and you know, th thinking about all the the benefits and the risks when when progressing um, on uh, you know leveraging these technologies. Uh, so surely that you know will will, will benefit the industry.